Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, Shiv here. All right, so we're back with another Battlefleet Gothic Armada tips and tricks. Now, this one is going to be kind of like a request episode. Um, in the comment section of one of the previous videos, somebody uh, asked to see more Eldar killing, apparently. Not that they were salty or hated Eldar. They actually did like him, but they wanted to see, you know, how people would set up against them. I guess they want to kind of see like some optimum builds that would kick their ass and this brought me to a really interesting concept and an idea for an episode and today we're going to talk about min maxing all right so what is min maxing well i could give you the definition that applies to other games but i'm going to basically talk about how it applies here in this game so let's give that definition min maxing is minimizing your negatives while maximizing your potential or positives all right so let's talk about the maximizing uh, every fleet has something that they really excel in, all right? I mean, like, really excel in. Okay, so you look at the Imperials. They've got torpedoes. Now, some of you might say, well, yeah, they also got Nova Cannons. they got all the macros. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. still. Damage output um, from torpedoes, point blank, versus damage output from macro cannons, point blank. Which wins? Uh, torpedoes. All right, moving on. So, yeah, torpedoes. Uh, you look at Chaos. They have carriers. Like, well, wait, they also got lands. Okay, again, we're not going to have this argument, all right? I'm looking at for biggest burst potential damage here, and it's going to be carriers, all right? Not even going to lie. Carrier. Eldar, you have pulsars. Yeah, nobody's ever going to argue that fucking thing. And orcs, it's basically their face ramming into you constantly, all right? So... With that in mind, building your fleet to maximize the potential of those abilities and basically focusing all your design on those abilities can lead to some really stunning and positive results. Now, the min part of this is basically trying to shore up some inadequacies in your fleet or to try to counter certain aspects that might end up just destroying your fleet and or making you a little bit more survivable. So basically, this is tanking the shit out of your... Um, your ships. All right, so with that in mind, I present to you the three classes or three factions we're going to be looking at, which is going to be the Chaos, we're going to look at Eldar, and then we're going to look at the Imperium. Um, now, I am going to say this. These are my own concept builds, my own design preferences, things that I have found that I really enjoy playing with and allowed me to be a little bit more comfortable and have a little bit more leeway in my shitty gameplay. All right, so here we have the Carrier Fleet of Corn. Yes, I said Carrier Fleet of Corn. All right, so I, I'm going to be the first to say this is so anti-lore, so anti-fluff, it's not even funny. But surprisingly enough, it's extremely effective, okay? Yeah, you got to love that corn symbol right on this skull right here. That looks so baller. All right, so why is a Carrier Corn Fleet a good idea? Well, a couple reasons here. You get the added boarding actions, you get the added teleportation strike, which, as we all know, is a really great way of messing with Eldar. And you get a really cool-looking ship. That's pretty much it. Alright? Seriously. But why carriers? Why not other ships? Wouldn't murders be better? Wouldn't, you know... Okay. Alright, cool. Fair, fair question. Okay, so here's why carriers. Uh, because carriers represent the biggest damage output weapon that... Uh, chaos have access to and when you have a bunch of carriers basically Putting all their bombers on one target. I don't care how many turrets you have. They're not gonna get everything They probably will but no This allows you to play a very interesting style of gameplay very similar to the kiting techniques that people have been developing with chaos But now you can kite as well as burst down the thing that you're kiting, all right? You're staying out of their range. You're able to constantly apply pressure to them and crush their ships. Nine times out of ten, though, I'm going to be perfectly honest, your enemy, once they get down pretty low and you haven't finished them off with that bomber wing, they're going to run away. But hey, that's okay. That's less targets for you to have to focus on, and you'll still end up winning the match. Now, this isn't to say that you can't just downright shred the hell out of the enemy. Oh, yeah, you do that quite nicely. Very, very nicely. I mean, this setup will actually take out a battleship so easily without ever fielding a battleship. Uh, Point-wise, it comes out to where you can take one battleship, one battle cruiser, one cruiser, and one light cruiser at 700 points uh, and be completely 
fine against everything that is out there that can be built on different factions. I'm not even kidding. You can actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anything out there. All right, so let's get to the upgrades, and we're going to explain why we took these upgrades. All right, so first up, we have the automated refueling system. Okay, it's a carrier fleet. This is pretty much the go-to first pick on everybody, all right? 20% reduction off of 60. Now, there's a little bit of confusion how the uh, reductions and or uh, system works in this game, so I'm going to explain it right now, all right? Everything with a base number, right, and is going to start here. This is your core set. Now, upgrades are the first ones that modify that, all right? So here we got 20%, so that's automatically 12 seconds off that. So now it's a 48. Now you apply crew, so that 12% is not going off the 60, but it's going off the 48, all right? This will bring it down to about 42.6. Uh, and from there, you could use um, reload the actual... Um, uh, special order to reduce it down even more. All right, full times. Okay. So next up we have is the improved auger array. Okay, so we're chaos. We have lots of lances. We have uh, range abilities. Gray, awesome. But you know, having range abilities and being able to see your opponent really do go hand in hand. Not to mention the fact that the improved auger array works very well with micro warp jump and as you can tell by looking at the skills every ship has it because being able to redeploy and get out of the fight is a huge important thing for this fleet you're not a line ship brawler you're not going to be getting into the fray of things too often you want to get within range unload your ordnance fire some shots with your lances Try to weaken down something and cripple it and or just outright kill it. And then you want to disengage. All right. You let your shields recharge. You come back, re-engage. It's a basic principle of the of the build. All right. So the improved arc array works really good. And the fact that it synergizes greatly with micro warp jump, it makes it an auto pick, especially for chaos. It should always be an auto pick. Now, the next one, I know a lot of people are going to go, really? Really? Yes, really. The additional teleportarium. All right, so we took corn, which means we get two on our lightning strike. Well, adding this now makes that three. Yeah, but aren't porting actions better? Okay, so there's this argument that's been persisting since, like, the dawn of time when it comes to uh, boarding actions and teleportariums in reference to Battlefleet Gothic, both on the tabletop and also in the digital translation version. Okay, so, yes, boarding actions are based on the tonnage of the ship, so the higher the tonnage, the more chances you get however those chances are generally at a reduced rate okay it's kind of like the argument of which is better imperial guard or the space marines well the imperial guard can field way more troops but the space marines can hit those troops a hell of a lot easier so which is really better well it all depends on how you play it uh for me though i found that the teleportarium also offers a lot of other really unique aspects that allows me to play this fleet as it's meant to be played as a hit and run, staying on the edge, and kiting type of build. Uh, Teleportarium gives me that 360 range, not to mention 5,000 range area. Okay, so 360 arc plus 5,000 versus, what, 2,500 and only on a 90 degree? So, yeah. Now, there's also the other really cool thing here of the... Um, Teleportariums have a higher chance of actually hitting than, say, your regular boarding action. So, yeah, lightning strikes will hit at a higher percentage rate than your boarding action. So there's something to be considered about that. Now, when fighting up against the Eldar with this, I noticed I was getting a lot of 40% and 50% depending on, you know, the ship. And, yeah, so let me, let's break that down. Hmm. Three with a 50% option. So it's a coin flip on each one. So, I mean, there were times where I was getting just one. There were times where I was getting all three. There were times where I was just getting two. So, yeah, it's always a, a, a really good thing against Eldar. Because if you could cripple a bunch of systems or even wipe out some of their pulsars, that's a benefit left and right. Nine times out of ten, you're going to cause some fires and probably, you know, maybe injure an engine or take out some weapons and things of that nature. Uh, but, hey, that's still a positive, guys. That's still a positive. And if you got this on autocast and you run up right to like one of their, their battleship, oh yeah, that thing is done. 
Done! Now, there is a, a negative to this. If they're playing Ulthway, the likelihood that this is actually going to work is reduced dramatically. Dramatically. So, at that point, yes, boarding actions do become better. So, know what um, type of ship you're looking at, all right? For those of you who don't know how to identify an Ulthway Eldar ship, it's mostly black with little white scribbly crisscrosses all along the front edge of, edge of the bow, all right? You'll be taking a look at it here shortly. All right, so if you see that, don't lightning strike it. All right, going on to the next item we took was the belt armor. This is pretty much an auto pick in every fleet design I take because if you play this game, you know how devastating an engine hit is or your generator's going down or your deck getting knocked out or things of that nature. So being able to negate that is a really good thing. But mind you, you only get one negating of it so yeah boom oh i i, I saved myself here but here, here comes the next salvo it takes out and you're, you're kind of screwed but guess what nine times out of ten once that gets hit most people kind of move on to the uh to another target i i've never really had the same item get hit twice in a row i mean the law of probabilities on this does kind of make that less likely unless you're facing up against eldar and then that goes right out the window the math for their crit chance with lock-on is just disgusting. All right. But yes, this should be an auto-pick in almost every fleet design. And the last one I took here was the auxiliary shield capacitors. Now, again, this is kind of a flex point, and some people might disagree with this uh, pick. Some people might agree with it. Just remember, this is a kiting hit-and-run fleet, where it's not a main engagement fleet. So our shields... Being able to get them recharged faster makes a lot of sense, all right? It means we can re-engage into the battles quicker. It means that we're not completely going to get screwed over, all right? So, yes, this does make some sense. But for some of you, you may not find this be overly good. You could also go with the additional shields. You can also add more armor if that's how you really feel. I would like to point out, though, if your whole build is reliant on hull... Guess what? That makes you very vulnerable to a lot of things, all right? Not even going to lie. So I'd rather spread that out a little bit and just have my shields be recharging a little bit more. But I would say that, yes, the additional void shield generator would be a good thing. All right, so the build actually does really good against uh, Eldar and surprisingly well against other uh, Chaos and Imperials and can hold its own against um, Orcs pretty nicely. Very, very nicely. The only downside with orcs is, uh, well, your battleship really tends to be a focused target. Uh, so whenever you're fighting orcs, you never want to take your battleship, just to be perfectly honest with you right now. Um, another little thing that is kind of problematic is if the enemy fleet is roughly grouped together, you're going to have to basically work the outer edges of it in order to be effective. So this means you're probably going to have to take out the escorts first which means you're probably going to have to drop your bombers on them to get rid of it. Uh, in general, uh, it, from like a light cruiser, two sets, yeah, like two bomber sets from a light cruiser will damn near kill an escort. Um, three is almost overkill. Four is beyond overkill. Uh, so yeah, you're, you're going to want to weaken those and take those out first. And the reason why is, even though it's an escort, it's still providing a turret defense. So if you're trying to launch your bombers in on a target and they're coming across a escort, the likelihood that it's you're going to lose a couple is increased. Now, if you see your enemy's got most of their ships compacted in one area, your bombers are not going to be overly effective because they're going to get shot out of the sky. I don't care how much you've got them crewed out. They're going to get shot out of the sky. O overlapping turret fire is a reality in this game, guys. So you're going to have to try to split them up some way. I recommend using stuff like stasis and plasma bombs, which, oh, look, we took in order to do this. Another great way of doing this is with taunt. It's like, oh, they're all grouped together. Well, let me taunt this guy, pull him out, focus on him. And now if your opponent doesn't instantly reshift the rest of his fleet to kind of keep them in line, that target can be isolated, crippled, and removed off the field very nicely. So here's an example of min-maxing for Chaos. Going full carrier works great. All right, so now let's talk about the Eldar. Yes, you know, everybody's least favorite faction. I don't care if you love them or hate them. Like, everybody has an opinion on them, and it's not always a good one. 
You know? Not always a good one. I've seen people talk hellified shit because of this faction. Alright. So here we go with the Eldar. Um, as you can see, I named it Min-Max for a reason. Okay, so as we discussed earlier, Pulsars are pretty much the bread and butter of the Eldar. They could do some really nasty stuff with them. Oh my god, do they do some really nasty stuff with them. But again, your ships are extremely fragile, alright? You really can't take much damage. So you're going to have to use those Pulsars pretty much at the like max possimum range. And doing autocast with them is a really bad idea. I'm going to tell you this right now. It's a really bad idea. Don't do it. Alright? Your Pulsars are a skill shot for all intents and purposes. For those of you who play MOBAs, you know what I'm talking about. Alright. So, let's look at the build. By the way, this is all Thway. As you can see, it's black. has a little bit of white, funky writing. It's... Hold on. Battleships it looks really bad on for some odd reason. Alright, here you go. There it goes. It, it rendered. Alright, see the little white scribblies? There you go. If you see a black ship with white scribblies, don't teleport or strike it. Alright. It's trying to rend here, but it's just not doing it. Which is really funny. Alright, moving on. Let's talk about this ship. So, Pulsars. Everything for this build should be based around Pulsars. And that's exactly what we did. Eldar are a hit and run fleet. They really don't have much variance in that. Um, to any degree, sadly. Alright. So, upgrade wise, we went as follows. The first thing we decided to do was extend the range of the Pulsars. Alright? Yeah, by the way, for a battleship, that's now 12k. Alright, for everything else, that's like 9k. That's lance range, guys. That is serious lance range. Alright, so they don't really have to get overly close to you now. Alright, long as they can see you, they can pulsar you. Just, just letting you know right now. Now, there's also a, a couple really cool things you can do with this. You don't have to take Ulth Wave. This was just my personal choice of taking it. Uh, if you take... Uh, the Altioch one, you could basically um, move to a position just um, like uh, using uh, Running Silent, move to a position, sit there, Running Silent goes off. By the way, your Camo Line Alloy makes you stealth and invisible. They won't know you're there as long as you don't move. So what you could do is you could use like escorts and or uh, other ships to kind of lure them into this trap. And the moment they come into it, <clears throat> pulsar them to death. Flip your other ships around, beep, blaze them out. You'll be able to use this to probably kill one target. Then after that, you're kind of screwed. But hey, it's it's an idea. It, it does kind of work in smaller point matches. All right. So let's talk about the upgrades. Uh, all right. So yeah, we extended the range on that. Now, the next thing we did was we went with the multi-vector crystal focusing. Now, I've not been a huge fan of this ability in other fleets. Like for Chaos, I go, this is fucking retarded. Uh, in Imperials, I don't agree with it. Um, though it makes more sense in Imperials than it does Chaos. Uh, I really don't play Orc enough to know what their equivalent is, but you get the idea here. But for Eldar, it makes a lot of sense. Okay, so read it. When using lock-on special order, Pulsar chances of dealing a critical damage is increased by 300%. Okay, so 300%. Hmm, well, let's see. What's the crit chance? 13. If I gotta tell you that this is basically 39... You guys really need to go back to school. All right, so 39% chance of causing a critical. So that's 39, and in this case, 39 times 4 times 3. Okay, so yeah, you're, the likelihood of you getting a crit with this is pretty damn good. On the battleship, I think it comes out to something like 5 crits. All right, if all 9 hits, that comes out to like a chance of basically 5 criticals on the... On the uh, battle cruisers, it comes out to something like four and a quarter. On the light cruisers, it's like two and a half. So yeah, that's th these are averages, guys. All right. So, but still, that's pretty disgusting if you think about it. All right. Yeah, sure, you might just get a bunch of fires, but remember, fire damage does actually stack on their ticking, okay? Yes, it can be removed by an emergency repair, whatever. 
Not to mention pulsars can be negated, all right? But a lot of people refuse to take the overcharged void shield uh, skill for some odd reason. I don't know why. Uh, but yeah, definitely it can be countered quite nicely. But for those who aren't expecting it, GG. All right. Now we all we opted not to take the shield reduction, or the one that basically applies more damage to shields. It probably would have made a, a lot more sense that way. More damage was actually getting through the hole. But by doing so, we ended up we would end up reducing our survivability. Which let's be honest, we're Eldar. We need every bit of little help when it comes to survivability. All right. So the next item we took was the reduction in fragile. Okay, so the fragile state is basically as such. You are 100% more likely to take a crit. Okay, well, if you look at like some of Chaos Lances, there's a 1% chance. Now that's 2% chance. If you look at some of like the Imperial weapons, um, okay, so like the plasma batteries, it's like 3.75. That goes up to 7%. Wow, that's pretty disgusting, right? Yeah, these things would tear apart Eldar if they could hit. So definitely, it, it, it's it's one of those scary scenarios that's built in as a racial trait. But hey, the deflecting one reduces that down to 50%. So yeah, it's not that great, but it's not that bad. All right, so now my 1% goes to 1.5. My, um, I'm not even going to do the math on the 3.75, guys. Sorry, I got the calculator right here, but that's too much like real work. So definitely, this is a great defensive measure. It's going to allow your ships to kind of survive a little bit better and, you know, stay in the battle just a little bit longer. Speaking of staying in the a battle a little bit longer, belt armor. Like I said, I am a huge fan of belt armor. I take it on every ship I possibly fucking can. Don't, don't, don't judge me, all right? This is probably one of the best defensive items you can get in this game. And topping it off, we have is extra life. Because if ever there was a fleet that needs extra life, it's Eldar. I mean, Jesus. Their battleship literally is a thousand. That's an orc battle cruiser. I'm not kidding. That's an orc battle cruiser, guys. And I also would like to point out critical damage actually does add more damage to it. All right. It's not just a, oh, here. All right. It does add more damage to it, depending on which one it does. Um, all right, so the idea of the fleet is pretty similar to the chaos, just a lot more frontal assaulty. Basically, it's run in. Oh, there's the enemy. Okay, so I'm gonna try to stagger my pulsars here. Eh, first set of pulsars, uh, balls maneuver, turn, run away. Second pulsar, eh, eh, run away. Third pulsar, eh, eh, run away. And by that point, that ship's pretty much dead. All right, that's generally the idea there. Now, with the battle cruisers and the battleship, you get this really cool extra bonus. As you're using Vol's maneuver and turning to run away, you hit your space bar, engage tactical cogitators, drop bombers. Seriously, that's your extra little bit of DPS you can do. Uh, for now, here's where things get a little bit different when you talk about cruisers. Since cruisers don't have pulsars, yes, I know it's a horrible thing. This was their idea of balance because technically there are two cruisers. There's no battle cruiser in the fucking Eldar uh, lineups. Uh, and basically, that was the heavy gun cruiser that had torpedoes, and then you had the um, basically what the battleship is. All right. So for here, we actually took a little bit of a different approach. Um, we took all the same basic uh, defensive ones, but we also added in the spectral helm to basically increase our turning. Now, somebody might say, oh, well, don't Eldar already turn pretty damn fast? Yes, yes, they do. But guess what? This thing has torpedoes. And being able to turn really quick and do a skill shot with a torpedo is a huge thing, guys. All right? If you honestly think this is just a gunship, you're missing out on the fact that torpedoes are a really nasty ability. I mean, come on. It fires off four torpedoes. And torpedoes have a 45 damage, but they also have a critical chance of 11. Yay, fun. All right. So you kind of want to play with that. Now, I chose to take the uh, enhanced infinity circuit because if ever there was a, um, a ship that was going to be in the fight a lot more than any of the other ones, it's probably going to be your cruiser if you're actually taking them. I generally don't. Uh, but this is a flex point. I, I will honestly say you could probably flex this completely out uh, and then maybe take, I guess, it, it's so hard to really say, May, maybe the dragon sails so you're really, really, really fast as you're coming in, you know, but 
not really. Uh, but it would allow you to be more of like a heavily armed scout. Uh, and then possibly draw the enemy back towards uh, your pulsar firing points. Um, so yeah, there is something to be said about that. But there just really wasn't a good spot here. I guess maybe the Blessing of Vol would have been a, a, a really good one to get. But at the same time, I really didn't feel so. Because in order for that to really benefit, you've got to be directly right behind it. Which, you know, considering the better turning, is a really distinct possibility of happening. But... I don't know. I, I, I went for more of a uh, defensive measure build. Um, mostly because I don't play these. I really don't. So I, I'm, I'm not an expert on, you know, the cruiser aspect of Eldar. Light cruisers basically are going to be matched up exactly as the battle cruisers. The only difference is, oh, you don't get to drop out um, bombers. And you also have no frontal uh, cannons to kind of weaken out the shields before your pulsars hit. That's pretty much it. All right. Uh, now we took the Ulthway favor, and let's let's talk about why we took the Ulthway favor. They actually did fix this now. Uh, Maelstrom does actually hurt the hull, and shields don't really mess with it anymore. When they first introduced Eldar, the the Maelstrom basically got negated by shields left and right. They fixed it, thank God. So yeah, this is actually a pretty effective ability. Um, what you could do with this is, is a great way of breaking up enemy fleets to kind of, you know, screw with them. And since all of your ships have it, what you could do is make a giant cluster, all right? So you go in, boom, 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 you hit them, you kind of hurt them, you drop out a cluster of maelstroms everywhere, right? So no matter where they go, they're kind of getting fucked on it, so they're going to have to zigzag and go all over the place. Well, guess what? That's breaking them up into easy-to-pick-off groups, all right? That's what I love about that. Uh, the other cool thing is the Psychic Blockade. Now, normally I'd say always go Altioch because, you know, the stealthing ability is really good. And if you play the hit and run shit pretty damn long, you could actually really do some nasty stuff with that. Um, what's it called? I always forget this. The Pathfinder Webway Assault. This one is really good. But more my play with Ulthway, the more I'm loving it. And the Psychic Blockade, especially at PvP, gives you a lot of survivability. Increases uh, the troop value by 30 against Lightning Strikes. Okay, so instead of the 50 crew you normally have, or troop value, you now have 80. Alright, that's going to basically take everybody's assault actions and reduce them down dramatically. Dramatically. Okay, so if I was normally getting a 50 against uh, an Eldar ship, I'm probably looking at something like a 30 to 27. Most likely about 27 to 25. So yeah, not a good scenario. Not a good scenario. So, but yes, this is min-maxing at its finest. We extended the range, we gave it more potential to cause criticals, and just totally wreck the shit out of your opponents. And that's what Eldars do. And that's how you should play them. All right. Now we're going to go to the last fleet we're going to talk about in terms of min-maxing, and that's going to be the Imperium, all right? Now, as I stated at the beginning, the Imperium is all about torpedoes. And, well, they're also kind of have the ability of being the most tankiest of fleets in the game. Now, some of you might say, well, no, 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 that would be orcs. No, 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 it would not. All right, tanking is more than just, hey, I can take a lot of damage. It's also mitigation. And, well, guess what? The Imperium is the only faction that can take damage to the hull as well as mitigate it. All right, so here we go. As you can see, we went completely with the Adeptus Mechanus. I mean, come on, this thing looks beautiful, beautiful. Really, it does. It's so gorgeous. Now, somebody is going to point out, wait. Didn't you just say that their thing was torpedoes? So why do you have a carrier battleship? Aha! <sighs> In practice, I sadly came to discover that while I loved playing around with the retribution, I ended up discovering that it wasn't overly that effective, all right, for the, the way I normally play the game. And what I ended up discovering was that the best way to actually maximize the value of the battleship slot was to go fucking the bomber set. So I literally skilled this thing out almost entirely as I would a normal chaos ship. But with a little minor differences here. 
All right, little minor differences, and we're going to cover that. And actually, the build changes quite frequently, depending on a lot of stuff. Uh, this is also the only fleet that I will play that doesn't have just generic copy-paste builds for, like, every ship. And there's a very logical reason for that. The Imperium has a lot of customization so that you can build towards countering certain enemies quite effectively. I.e., if you're going up against Eldar, obviously more macro weapons are going to be the thing you want the most. Uh, and lances are definitely not going to be the thing you want ever. If you're going up against orcs or other Imperials or uh, Chaos, obviously lances are going to be a good thing. So we have a lot of customization when it comes to the cruiser side. But let's get to the upgrades for the battleship now. Starting off, we take the automated refueling system. Same reason as talked about in uh, Chaos. Next up, we took more shields because shields are good. Uh, we also took more life and we also took the typical belt armor. Now, here's the two differences. We took the Voss Pattern Void Shield. Okay, so now I have a 25% chance to deny damage. Here's the mitigation, guys, thus making them a lot tankier, all right? 25% chance. Yeah, it's a 1 in 4, but shit, those 1 in 4s add up. And we also decided to increase the turret count from, I believe, the base stat is 18, and now it's now up to 21. So what does this mean? Well, your bombers ain't going to do shit to my ship, and your torpedoes are less likely to actually impact. And that's a good thing. Though, in all honesty, for those two different things, I could always just launch out fighters to counter it. But I really want to use this as an offensive potential. I don't really like thinking of defense. That's why I make everything defensive very passive. That's the whole idea of min-maxing. All your defense is passive, so you can focus on the offense. Not to mention, you have emergency repairs for a reason. All right, so upgrade-wise, um, we already covered. Now let's get to skills. So skills, we kind of went a very specific way here. Uh, for maneuvering purposes, we took the micro-warp jump because we have a 10k base view range. So yeah, that's good. Uh, we took taunt on our bigger ships just because, hey... Being able to kind of isolate the enemy um, and make them not all in one group will allow super efficiency for the torpedoes. And we're going to talk about why we went full torpedo with this and that build when we get to those ships. Uh, of course, you know, stasis bob is a good control tool and zone denial uh, tool. Plasma bomb is a good get the fuck out of here tool. Uh, and also supercharged void shields. Now you'll notice like every ship here took supercharged void shields. And thank you to Adeptus Mechanus for allowing us to create the most ungodly build ever. I'm just going to say that now. That's the only reason why we took the Adeptus Mechanus. Because it allowed for the most expensive buffed up baller tank you've ever seen. Alright. So now we're going to get to the battle cruisers, and this is where a lot of the identity of the fleet is going to come into. Anything with torpedoes, this is where it all gets its identity. Okay, so let's talk about the upgrades. So upgrade-wise, well, let's get to it. it. It's I don't know how I could really totally express how much I love this upgrade. The short burn torpedoes. The ship's torpedo speed is improved by 50%. Why is that good? Because now you can skill shot the fuck out of Eldar. And you want to talk about pain? You want to talk about pain? If four of your torpedoes hit the Eldar, that is damn near death for them. Not to mention, you know, they have a pretty decent crit rate against uh, Eldar. So, yeah, you can really do some damage to the Eldar thanks to this, uh, thanks to your torpedoes. And the fast... Fast amount of it means you don't have to lead your target as far, which means you're less likely to have them do an emergency uh, um, action to turn their ship. So you're, the likelihood of getting more on target is definitely increased. Not to mention, a lot of times people see like a ship coming up and they know it's a torpedo ship and they're going to basically try to do a warp jump out. Well, guess what? Because these are moving faster, you're more likely to hit them with it. So to me, this is like the most awesome skill it doesn't really enhance the damage it just makes it more consistent and i like that i like that all right next up we took all the normal defensive tools we went to additional void shields life belt armor we got the vox shield and here we actually took the armor piercing ammunition because a good amount of time this ship is going to be in the fray all right it's going to be in the fray so 
If it's going to be able to, you know, point blank uh, the torpedoes, turning off to the side so you can get another ship, uh, the uh, open shot to take its torpedoes is going to be pretty good considering you'll be within that 3k range and reducing their armor down to 25% and just smashing it to it's going to reduce them down even more and thus the likelihood that ship's going to survive is reduced to zero. Uh, before I was actually taking this uh, ability I noticed that it was kind of hard for me to finish ships off and most of them just kept escaping. So yeah this changed that like they were just falling apart left and right. All right. Um, now you get to the cruisers. Like I said, here's where you get to have a lot of flexibility. But we want to make sure everything still had torpedoes. We want no Nova cannons here, all right? That's way too much shit I gotta fuck around with and remember what's got this. Fuck that. That's overcomplicating a simple fucking game. All right. So here we've got the Gothic. Now this was actually the first ship I picked for it because lances are good. But unfortunately, as we've discovered, lances plus Eldar equals lol. So this ship is almost completely useless against Eldar other than, hey, I can ram the fuck out of them and put torpedoes into them. Uh, but this isn't to say that it can't actually hurt the Eldar. It just has a very reduced chance of it. Uh, but if you can use things such as your taunt to basically bring them to the broadside and then they kind of stop moving, great. Or when the Eldar finally say, oh no, I want to get out of here, those lances will end their existence like that. So this is kind of like the coup de grace against Eldar in many ways, but is it overly effective in getting them to that point? No, not really. I mean, yeah, the ramming and the torpedoes help, but I mean, the sustained gunfire is just not there. All right, next up we have is the Tyrant. Now, this is the exact opposite. We got plasmas over here, and we've got regular over here, even though they look exactly alike. I know, guys. I know. Yeah. Anywho, even though technically all macro batteries are plasma batteries, but that's besides the point. So yeah, definitely a lot better at killing the Eldar on the broadsides. Uh, and again, torpedoes are fun. And now you'll notice here in the Gothic, and we're just going to go back to this, the upgrade here. Alright, so we did not invest in our weapon systems because it really did not seem overly worthwhile. Because investing in it just... Mm, I, I started realizing that I was going to need kind of uh, an umbrella against certain things. And those certain things were going to be torpedoes and bombers. Because I looked at this like, yeah, this is a really super tanky fleet. But if somebody just starts kiting us, the likelihood that we're going to be able to survive it, it gets reduced quite significantly. So I decided to up certain ships with uh, turrets. And those ships would basically be anything with lances. Um, you know, and kind of focus on that. But when it came to the Tyrant, I opted not to do that and just go for the pure damage output with the armor-piercing ammunition. But everything else was identically the same. All right. So then we get to light cruisers, and we get another little funny thing here. It's exactly like the regular battle cruisers. I'm not even kidding. Hey, we got armor-piercing. We got these. We do, 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 do. Yep, all works good. Uh, Crew-wise... Let's talk about that. You'll notice the crew wise is actually very similar to what we would normally take on a carrier fleet. Um, we're heavy into servitors. We've got the the repair, i.e. tech priest. Uh, but instead of the squadron sergeants, we're investing in the master gunners because we are gunnery ships. All right. Now, as I stated before, servitors, that 12% reduction is a really good thing. That also applies to torpedoes as well, which guess what? So does Reload. Reload is going to be probably like your best friend in this game. All right. It's definitely going to be your best friend. All right. So that is basically the whole thing on min-maxing. Really pretty simple. And, you know, I spent a lot of long time doing this. And I know you guys kind of really want to see something. So let, let's go ahead and do it. Let's do it. We're going to bring out the imps. We're going to bring out this. And we're going to go up against Eldar, because apparently that's what people want to see. Eldar dying in droves. Alright. So we're going to set this up to 700. We're going to go full. And we're just going to do Eldar Corsairs. We'll just leave them at normal. That's at least somewhat of a challenge. Alright. So we have 700 points. A lot of different ways we could do this. Um, but we're actually just going to go heavy on the battle cruisers. And we're going to take a tyrant. All 
All right, there we go. We're not even going to bring any light cruisers. We're just going to bring four cruisers. This will allow us to focus a lot more on using our skill shot ability. All right. So let's take a look at the board before we deploy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, if I was a smart Eldar player, I would definitely be advancing around here and try to make the engagement right around here because then I could easily come to here. And if I had to, fall back here and use this as kind of like a blocking line and then redeploy from that point, right? Now, we are the defenders, so they actually have to kill us. So we're going to actually deploy over this way. As you can see right now, melt a, oh, hold on. Yeah, our torpedo cooldown is 39.6 seconds because of everything we have going for it. All right. Let's get in here. See where the enemy is. Okay, so we've got several of them over this way. So we're going to go and start pointing there. It's not that much of a difference here. All right. Let him settle. There we go. All right, so what we're going to do is... Boom, reload. Boom, reload. Boom, reload. Boom, reload. Resuming normal function. Now, notice it's out down to 30 second reload time. So, we're basically just going to keep throwing fields of torpedoes in that general direction because there's a bunch of ships there. Um, and if you look at the spread, it's going to cover quite a bit. Uh, at least interacting with possibly two. Boom, that one hit directly face. All right. And look at that. We're up again. All right. Resuming normal functions. Changing course. All right, we're rotating around. Enemy ship sighted. Yes, Admiral. Alright, so this guy is coming in. Yep. Awaiting orders. Activating technical cogitators. Orders received. And we got that nice little ram action there. They're gonna try to lock us down here. And because he's not moving, those lances actually are paying out really nicely. And what we're going to do here is going to do a little bit. Activating tactical cogitators. Now we've taken a lot of damage on him. Activating tactical cogitators. Alright, we got the whole breach on it there. And what we're going to do with this one here, we're also going to get his shields up. And we're going to rotate him around. Rotate this one to here. Activating 
tactical cogitators. Ah, uh, he saw that move coming. Cruising speed set. All right. We're going to go this way. Resuming normal functions. And we've now taken him out of the fight. Activating tactical cogitators. I'm gonna rotate him around. Boom! That is the skill shot, ladies and gentlemen. All right, and that is game. So you asked how you defeat Eldar and how you make him your personal bitch. There you go. There you go. Now we did have to use a lot of tact tactical cogitator, but my God, wasn't that fun? That was a lot of fun. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you like these videos. Please like, subscribe, leave comments down below. Let me know what else you'd like to see and learn about. Till next time, stay safe, have fun, and all praise to the God Emperor.